everyone. Welcome to another episode of Help with Natalie Cuomo. I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this episode forever. <laughs> I'm here with one of my favorite people, Jennifer Scalia Scott. How That's are it. you? I'm good, Natalie. Wow, I finally got here. Yes, how are you? I'm good. I'm great. I'm doing good. Uh, Jen and I know each other from taking Gwen Hanman's acting class for yes. many years. And um, when was yeah. that? Like five years ago? Maybe. When we were in the class? I guess so. It feels yeah. like it wasn't as long ago as it was, but I guess that's yeah. how long ago it was. Mm -hmm. Yes. I met. I, I don't think you had... Were you tattoo -less then? I had some tattoos because I do remember Hidden? when commenting on them a few times. As as they grew, yeah. But there weren't as many. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was such a great experience. I feel like everyone in that class had such a close relationship. Yeah, we're still kind of together, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I listened to your book this morning, so it would be fresh, The House in the Middle of the Street. What did you think? I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. So I also watched it. So it's a visual experience right. as well. There are three versions, right? There's the, There's a Kindle, which actually I... I wrote it to be narrated, to be listened to, mm -hmm. um, but there is a Kindle version um, for people that just, you know, would rather let their own imaginations hear, see everything. Yeah. There's a narrated version, the audio, which is on Audible and a few other, a lot of platforms. Um, and then we did a video storybook, which I like the most, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Miles Mullen did the illustrations, those creepy illustrations. I love <laughs> and, you know, I love the way it, you know, you're just, the pages are moving and you can read along and you hear and you see. And um, so, yes. And that one actually you can only get on my Vimeo site. Yeah. So, first of all, you're like one of my favorite people ever, just in general. Like our conversations, like, always inspire me and I think back to them like in points in my life I think back to conversations we've had when I'm like struggling I'm like Jennifer said this once okay. right sitting on the steps yeah yeah. yeah yeah so thank you for always being that person I'm just so glad you're here and yeah. second of all your voice is so comforting like you have just a great <laughs> voice for voiceover audiobooks like it was amazing I kept thinking when I was listening to the book so all I knew is that it was called the house in the middle of the street and you said inspired by my lovely childhood with the skeleton emoji. So I'm like, what am I expecting here, right? I actually only sent that to you, but I am, I'm glad it's I'm sorry, out. I'm yeah, sorry, the, the cat is out of the bag. I'm That's so fine. Um, yes, it's actually a true story, if you can believe is it. Is it? So, well, in, well, it's inspired by some truth. I So the whole time I'm, sure. like, uh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm trying to put all of these pieces together about yeah. what the hidden meaning behind this book is. So essentially, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah. So, um, well, I wrote, um, I was writing a feature length script mm -hmm. when we were at Winds. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw any of like the workshop I did. Um, and actually, Le uh, Leonard Cohen's last album. Mm -hmm. which is amazing. It, I think he, it was released maybe a few weeks before he died. Um, I had, Wynn had those song exercises, and I went through the whole album, mm -hmm. and I would bring them in. And I was working on the characters of this screenplay that's in development now, that, mm -hmm. I, that you have a part in. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I put it aside for a little while, and my agent was really encouraging me to write short form. Mm -hmm. um, there were a few short films out of my film company, 18 Bleaker Films, that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. My son's a director, so he directed a few. Some of them are out. One of them's coming out, actually, this month. Tonight's your night. Um, but in writing those things, I was getting up at 5.30 in the morning, this time last year, sort of finishing up those different projects. And it was weird. I, you know, my husband was away. Um, my kids are, have moved out. I have my cats. And I would get up at like 5.30 in the morning, sort of do my morning ritual, which is pretty specific. Like I'm a pretty disciplined person. And sat down to write. Um, and that's what came out. 
instead of writing what I was supposed to be writing. Um, and it's, it, it takes place in the, in the house that I partially grew up in. Wow. Um, and, you know, when I was a child, I mean, there's, there's a lot of metaphors, but when I was a child, my fam, my mother's an immigrant from Greece, mm-hmm. always working, even on Christmas. Like, we didn't really celebrate much except for New Year's Eve. For whatever reason, that was like the holiday to celebrate and um, sort of unusual for my family. They were very serious people and had to be, you know, hardworking. And so they would all celebrate. But like about 10 minutes before the new year would come, I don't know where I got this from, but um, I would get a, a simple glass jar. I'd ask my grandmother, who I lived with, and um, I would run around the house and like capture the air and clamp it into wow. the jar and I would write the year just passed and I believe I really believed that I mean I'm gonna you know I, I'm gonna sound like I'm certifiable no, I believed no, no. I believed that if I contained the little bit of air right before the year went on that it would capture everything that was bad in the year mm-hmm. um, so that the new year would be clean and fresh and good um, I love that. So, and I would line them up. I mean, it was like pretty strange. Um, but, um, and one year, I guess like six years in, a relative of mine, um, not on New Year's Eve, but on just a regular day, I went up to my room, which I shared with her, and um, she had uncapped all the jars. And I almost passed out. And I really believed that, like, everything bad was in the air. Um, So it sort of started with, like, me thinking about that because it was in October when I was writing it Mm -hmm. and the new year was coming. It was just sort of, like, stream of conscious writing. And, you know, what ended up showing up was um, I really thought about my childhood and – how things happened that were not right, let's just say, you know, Um, and who in my family noticed it and who covered it up. Hmm. And like as a child, when you see things and you know they're wrong, like we have strong intuition. We're born with it. And I think as you grow – if the people that you live with in your community kind of in- validates you and says, yes, what you see is true. Um, but if you have people around you that say, no, that's not really happening, when it really is happening, you you start to not trust your own intuition. So it sort of was like generated from that. Um, and of course, like, you know, I'm Greek and I grew up, my uncle always read the Greek myths to me and he was – a bit of a storyteller and um, I was a big reader. So I mix in some of that mythology Mm -hmm. with the harpies and, um, you know, and I really think that like storytelling overall um, and it's in the ancient writings, you know, like the Celtic stories, the Greek stories, all these stories that we have, um, Grimm's fairy tales, like they're, they're extreme and like the, the, the real ones, not the Disney version. Um, Hans Christian Andersen, you know, like the Little Mermaid, like she doesn't end up marrying the prince, you know, she right. ends up in the ocean foam. Um, I think those stories are are meant to be extreme and sort of horrifying to teach us things about our life. And, you know, for me, that's one of the things that I learned growing up that, you know, things believe what you see and um, and make choices. You know, uh, that's why at the end of it, there's like a moral. It's like, ultimately, you're in charge of your life. Like, what the fuck do you want, you know, in your life? And what do you want out of it? Yeah. So those children just represent our demons. They show up. But, you know, if you notice um, at the very beginning, the little girl, you know, she says, may I be invited in? Because, you know, I'm a believer in that, that you have to let something in. 
Hmm. You know, you ha- you have to agree to it. And, um, you know, children obviously get dragged along, but it's one point in your life. We always hit that point in our life where it's like, okay, well, you're the leader of your life. What do you want to do about it? Right. You know, and also go with your intuition. Go with your gut because it usually tells you the truth. And there's a lot of people around that want to hustle you and say, like, wait a minute, that's not how it really is. Or, like, you know, people say um, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Don't keep thinking it's that, you know, oh, no, but then they're going to be like this. So so that's what it comes from. And it was like a fun to – to kind of express different things with horror, you know, and the extremes um, of these children and what they really are and um, and how you can get dev- devoured by things too. Yeah. By your choice and overlook things. Um, I think, um, you know, like we consume so much nowadays and – Sometimes we're so addicted to like whatever we're consuming, we don't see what's right in front of us, you know. So, so there's a serious tone, but at the same time, it's you know, I'm curious like how you felt it and how you read it, if it also just felt like creepy and fun. So I felt like, well, first I definitely felt like the moral that was kind of spelled out was like you know, be careful. People can be very bad and. Or they can, you know, be careful who you let in, of course. Right. But then also sort of about, like, letting the past define you or not. And maybe. That's fe- cool. I felt like there was a lot about, like, what we sacrifice for the past. Like, I felt like there was a mm-hmm. lot of talk about, like, sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And because um, ultimately she had nothing left to sacrifice, so she had to give herself. Right, the woman, Rebecca. what the children fed off of was fear. And it's cool because I immediately, when when Ellie ran away from the house, like I immediately saw you because I was like, oh, that's Jen running away from the house. (laughs) (laughs) Because, um, uh, but I, I feel like that kind of fear that a lot of people are stuck in, people get devoured by, like fear of the past, fear of, being accepted in into certain like traditions right so i was just kind of curious about um i was just curious about like all of the metaphors behind everything and you know it's i pictured this pokemon the whole entire time of the (laughs) which one of the birds there's this one pokemon that uh looks like a it's like a ghost pokemon that looks like a bird with a witch head yes i know it it looked it like it reminded me of those birds. And I have to know, what, were you doing the voices of Happy? And mm-hmm. th- that was so good. It's creepy, right? They were good voices. Oh, thank you. They yeah. were so good. So much fun. I mean, it was great. They were fun to listen to. And I didn't That's expect cool. them at all to turn into very scary birds. And But the fact that also that like they took her husband and she was sort of stone faced about it. Yeah. And when you're consumed by something, like all of a sudden everything changes. I love yes. the way that like you showed their love like nothing else mattered. They looked at each other. They had this like silent like love and acceptance. And then she became consumed by something she, from the, the past. Spell. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you got that because it is, like I said, it was taken out of a larger script and a larger world, which is really – that took place in 1836. Like Minerva, the woman mm-hmm. of the house that um, Rebecca yeah. inherited it from. So she's a real – character for me like she's a very developed character from this other world Mm -hmm. that takes place in 1836 in New York City and I will go back to that story and when I continue with these I'm going to have a series of them you'll get to know what happened to Minerva what happened to her daughter why her daughter died in there but there is the tone of generational a generational curse and that's very Greek you know I grew, grew up Greek and you know, I'm first generation, and when we went back to the village where my mother's from, which is a small mountain village, very poor, mm-hmm. um, when I was a child, we used to go there, and the, the townspeople would whisper. Really? And I would wonder, like, what, you know, you could feel like a strange vibe. They would look at us, and I thought, oh, it's because we're from America. And then as time went on, 
they, you know, got to be friendly with some of the people there outside of the relatives. And they told us, like, you know, there was a curse placed on your family. And they told me where it was from. And I'm not going to tell you now. I'll tell you maybe when we're off the air. But um, I'll reveal it in the future. But it made me, you know, as a, as a child, when I'm listening to this and I was thinking, what happened? So I asked a lot of questions. And it really took uh, up to now for me to hear all the stories. And until, like, the last oldest person was left in the village who, who passed a few years ago, who told me ultimately what happened. Um, so... You know, I took what I knew about my family line, and the Greeks will call it a curse. We'll call it mental illness, addiction, right. um, self-centered, whatever you, you know, there's a thousand names depending on who you are. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so so this family is dealing with a past, a curse that's being passed along to them. And what are you going to do about it? And... um and I do think that happens in life. You know, I think like I'm making it more mystical and sort of um, literary, but like we wake up in the morning, it's like we have shit from where we come from and some of it is great and some of it we don't want. And at one point you say, let me look at it. Okay, what do I want? What don't I want? What works? What doesn't work? Um, and I think a lot of people are stuck, you know, in what happened and um, you know, they try to run away from certain things, but it, it's, it's in them, you know, it's inherent until you really look at yourself and make choices, you know, or accept, you know, and say, okay, you know, that's who I am. And that's I definitely, cool too. I felt like there was a helplessness, like there was no like police that could come. There was no like higher power or anything that could like descend upon the story and save it. The only thing that could save it and like make the happy and Virgil stop was fearlessness from Ellie. Facing them. And it was yeah. kind of simple, right? Mm -hmm. Like she just had to, well, she, you know, that's why I had her unleash all the, all the air. Mm -hmm. um, because at one point, like you just have to let it all go and say, you know, I'm, I look, you know, I'm seeing you motherfucker. And I'm here. And what's what usually happens, and in my experience in life too, when you face somebody or your demons or whatever it is, straight in the face and say, no, you know, move, um, they leave easily because – and the, the harpies are a great example because – there's so many things out there that they can devour that if you hit like a strong person that that sees it for what it is, like they move on. They they're like no problem. All right, and you know I've taken what I can here. On to the next. So right. like I wanted that feeling of it was kind of it's kind of like um, Wizard of Oz. Like she just had to say I want to go home and you know click her heels. It was so simple. She went through this whole journey, but really all she had to do was ask for what she wanted and it just happened. Um, and, you know, that might sound a little Pollyanna, but I kind of, I think that's the way life works, really. You know, when you get clear, um, it clears out. What are things that have helped you? Like, I feel like you've told me stories, like in our personal conversations about times that you've been consumed by things or maybe like lost yourself and <laughs> then found your way like what are things that have helped you get to that place I think that's something that I admire so much about you is that you're just you you always find your way you find yourself and you always go back to making your art and I love that like how do you always get back to that place thank you for saying that I feel the same way about you um I, you know just to to say like I am so impressed with <laughs> What, you know, you made a, you picked a lane, you know, you picked a lane. You're like, uh, that's not working. That's not working. I'm doing this. And I know you work hard um, and you're having fun doing it, you know, and then you start up and you keep going and then it grows. So like, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, you know, I think that it's, I have learned to do that, like to keep going, mm -hmm. um, I think I learned a long time ago, like it's good to be uncomfortable and push. Yeah. It's how, you know, it's how everything works. Like I remember my, my husband, when I was having Stella Rose, he was like, push, push that <laughs> motherfucker. You know, I mean, that's how you just got to go. And, um, but 
I think that um, I have I've surrounded myself with people that encourage me, and um, I found those people, you know, and um, and so when I hit a wall, like I just you know I have some good friends that remind me because I definitely am somebody who will fall into self doubt, and um, but I but I've always gotten up again. You know, and yeah. um, it's just like, I don't know, from like old dance training or something. It's just like repeat, repeat, get up, repeat, keep going, keep going. Um, and then all of a sudden you look back and you're like, oh, I'm somewhere, you know, I'm further along than I was. So, um, you know, I think you got to and I think you have to um, like for me, not be afraid to fall hmm. and um and like drop in, you know. Right. I that's what I like about acting. It's like you can you know, it's scary. And you know, those parts that you really want to play, it's like you got to face yourself and just drop in in front of everybody. Um and that's that's th- I really feel alive when I do that. It's like you know, and I'm like halfway there. You know, I just had a birthday, I'm 53 and at this point, like happy birthday! Thank you, and you, <laughs> happy birthday! Um, like we're gonna die. <laughs> so what the fuck? Like just do whatever you want to do. Yeah. I mean, like you know, be a good person, um, be there for others, be there, for, but be there for yourself first. Like this is a limited amount of time on Earth, and yeah. um, uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of friends, unfortunately, that have passed away young and um you know it's like sometimes i feel like you know i'm gonna like i wish that didn't happen but like it encourages me to live my life because i i understand that you know this is the time we have Mm -hmm. um so you know and have fun like we gotta have fun I, and I love watching you and what you're doing because, you know, sometimes it's work, but it's like you're you're make you're having fun. You're going forward. Yeah, it's amazing. Ask yourself when you take a shower, where do you start? For me, I start with Manscaped. First, I start with my Manscaped body wash. It smells like cologne, and it gets me super clean. Then I use my Manscaped two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Gets my hair feeling great. Lastly, I use the landscape, the Manscaped 4.0 lawnmower. It's perfect, and it's got me feeling smooth. By the way, your balls will thank you. So hop on over to Manscaped.com and use the code Natalie C for 20% off, plus free shipping. That's right. Use the code Natalie C for 20% off at Manscaped.com and free shipping. All right, let's get back to the show. Like, what is it that you are that you want to do in this next year? You have a birthday on Saturday, right? <sighs> yeah, I do have a birthday on Saturday. Um, I don't know. I feel like um, I really want to travel more. Like, I want to do comedy, like, on the road more mm-hmm. so much. Like, I feel I want to write a new hour. I want to travel more. And... I guess, yeah, I kind of want to expand on, I guess, yeah, I guess writing and traveling more is pretty important to me. Mm-hmm. I feel like a little, st- I always get, feel a little stuck when I'm in New York for too long because like the New York comedy scene is just like, it's too small mm-hmm. and, and you just start to feel like happy and Virgil are just here there it feels like there are a lot of those people yeah and it just makes that are looking to pull right they're just just hungry they're hungry motherfuckers yeah Yeah. and it just makes me feel bad so I where's the scene like where's an interesting comedy scene I don't know if it's necessarily like there is an interesting comedy scene somewhere I just like I think when you're stuck in one place for too long it just becomes like incestuous Mm -hmm. or like it's just too and competitive and weird and it's like I just want to be focused on what I'm doing and I think I always feel like that when I'm in New York City too long so I'm excited to just 
break out, yeah. break out keep of moving, that and right? keep moving away yeah. from it. It just fe- it starts to feel so like static. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's yeah. just not. It's I, fun to go from place to place and like feel is. the group and you know um, be on the road. Yeah, you know, be on the road is fun. Yeah, and I just I feel like I'll get I get inspiration for like what I want to write about and like what mm-hmm. life is because like life here is amazing and I feel really grateful for it but I also like want to be able to speak to other experiences not just people that live in New York City or LA or something do you bring your dog no I don't that's the one thing (laughs) (laughs) I wish I mean I don't know I I am I am grateful for New York City but it's just like such a double-edged sword because I feel like I just if I'm here for too long, I just get so fed up with it. Yeah, I mean, you also like. Have you ever lived elsewhere? Mm-hmm. Really? No, you got to go. Yeah. You know, when I was seventeen, I mean, I you know, I left that house as quick the first chance I got. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> my mother would kill <laughs> I don't me. Blame you. My mother like got COVID a few months ago, and she found her way onto Instagram. Oh, and really? And she was like, hmm, "What is this house story?" And I was like. Oh, did she listen to it? No. She keeps saying, like, show me how to download it. Would I was she like, know? I will, I will. Um, I think I, I told her, you know, she's 87. Like, and my mother's pretty slick. Like, yeah. if she knew, she would overlook knowing. She would, right. like, I actually said, you know, um, that's a, I used the house as the illustration. And she went, that's not my house. <laughs> so she she doesn't I think she's smart and she knows not to um connect the dots. But um anyway, it's um but I you know, I left and I moved to DC and then I was there for like four months and then I went to Greece and I lived there for a little while and then I went to right. Dallas. That was a interesting that was nuts. Um that was 1989 or 88, 89 when mm-hmm. I was in Dallas. And I don't know if it's changed, but like they called me damn Yankee down there. I got in a lot of trouble. Oh and at the God. time I was like in trouble. You know, I was I, I, I was flirting with a lot of trouble. And my uncle actually did me a favor. He came down and picked me up and he said, you can't stay here. You'll get arrested. Really? <laughs> He's like, you, we got to get you out of here. He was right. Um, yeah, I mean, they were pretty – pretty prejudiced to New Yorkers, you know? Oh. Yeah. And like, they'd be like, how does it feel to be a damn Yankee? But it, but I was impressed. Like I saw some real cowboys when I went there with like these jean trench coats down to the floor. I mean, they were awesome. I was impressed. <laughs> and so but you got to do that. You know, I lived yeah. in California for a little while. Um, you know, even like when it's a nightmare, it's cool. I find and it you got to so, do it. It's so hard to leave New York for some reason. Like I don't, it's like I feel like so attached to New York, but I also and I also yeah. don't want to be here. Like it's this very strange relationship I have to the city. I'm like yeah. this is the best comedy city in the world. It has so many clubs, and then I'm like, ugh, I also hate it. It's yeah, so but strange. You know what? New York is the best city in the world. That's why it's hard to leave. But you gotta leave. Yeah, and then you can come back. Like we we were born in the best city in the world. Yeah, that's the truth. People will say what they want. It's yeah. it's awesome. I mean, I've been everywhere. It's and I think that's why I came back because, like, you can't you can't recreate New York City. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But you got to go when you travel enough. It feels like it makes up for it because if you're like, oh, I'm on the road like half of the year, then you're like, okay, right. yeah. I don't know. I think also, uh, I don't know. There's just something about the city that is just so claustrophobic with so many people, so much energy all the time, and everyone just doesn't have an awareness of other people's space. Like when you go other places in the country, the fact that people look up and they're like, how's your day? I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's good. Thank you. How was yours? You got to get out of here for it's a little like, while. <laughs> it's like crazy. Yeah. It just makes you think – it's just like there's just a general – there's just a general agitation in every single person in the city because of the way they walk around. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I hear you. Um, I mean, you sound like you need to be somewhere else for a little while. 
and that's cool. Um, you don't feel that way. I'm. I mean, you. You feel. I, you I've like already. Me you know, I do travel enough, so okay. I get out of the city. But um, I mean, I'm a. I'm. I love New York City. You like do. you know, my husband's like. We have a house in Montauk, and he's like, you know, we should spend more time out there. And he always wanted to live in California, and I was like, yeah. I'm not raising my children in Los Angeles. You got to be kidding! Like, it's you do, fine yeah, to you visit, do love New but York, huh? well, I mean, it's like that's I'm going to get you know canceled for this, but it's like, you know, it's not a real place. I mean, what the, Montauk, Los Angeles? What do you mean it's not a real place? It, it's I mean, even like the palm trees, like everything is transplanted. I wouldn't live in Los Angeles, but outside. But yeah. Anyway, I, you know, he, he's he's been good to hang out. You know, yeah. he would prefer somewhere else. <laughs> and um, we travel enough, so that's cool to like, exp- you know, have a break from the city. Yeah. But you know, it's not for everybody. Um, you know, I I did grow up in Queens and Corona next to a gas station. Like, I'm wired for this stuff. But, I mean, you're, you're from Queens, yeah, right? Um, I wouldn't go back to Queens. It's not my favorite borough at all. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stay here in Manhattan. But um, but I, you know, like my son will be like, "How do you? where do you see yourself, you know, dying? And I'm like, in a pre-war apartment in Manhattan, like surrounded by my books and like go take a walk around the block and come back and, you know... <laughs> And Sounds... call it a call it a life. Um, really, but I love it. I think it's the best place in the world. What do you love about it? Um, I mean, I when I moved to Manhattan, and I love Manhattan. You know, I know Brooklyn's popular. Queens is getting mm-hmm. there. I mean, they always say Queens is going to get there, and it never does. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, you know, maybe it will. But um, I think when I came here. Um, I guess I moved here when I was into the city at 19 mm-hmm. um, or 20. Um, I was somebody who, like, I didn't really know how like, – I was kind of an introvert, mm-hmm. you know, um, and it was a place where I felt like I wasn't alone, but I was alone, and I loved that. Yeah. And, you know – I don't think I'm a, I'm not as introverted as I was at that time in my life and there you know I was sort of going through stuff and um the city kept me comfortable and kept me company and there's no other place I mean I love Paris um I think that would be the closest city to New York City to me but um you know I can walk down a street and feel like I've engaged like the very thing that you didn't like that I've engaged with hundreds of people right but i still am with myself yeah and and i and i think we get i get lazy in new york it's probably one of the reasons why i can't stay in los angeles too long because you have to work to get diversity there and you have to you know um you have to look for stuff in new york all i have to do is like leave my apartment get on the concrete and i'm just bombarded by a lot of different things, a lot of different people, a lot of different cultures, right. languages. I like that. And it, it inspires me. And like, you can just go. I mean, one of my favorite things is just sitting on a stoop with like a good sandwich yeah. and a good cup of coffee in the like little sunlight hitting me because New York has great sunlight and just enjoying that sandwich and that coffee and watching everybody. And I'm not talking to anyone, but I feel like I'm having a whole situation with others and that's really what I love about the city more than the museums and which is all great it's all there mm-hmm. but it's vibrant and nobody nobody is more important than the city mm-hmm. no one person is more important than the city the city is the most important character and i love that and that's why and that's why i write about new york and like in this feature it's about new york in 1836 and then it comes to present day and you know there's like parallel lives going on um it's fascinating place to me so yeah i mean i i mean i like that perspective i feel like maybe you know whenever i feel doubt about new york i'll just just listen to this (laughs) (laughs) i see that i mean and i I like I like the idea of it. I feel like it can be romanticized, but then it's like, 
And then it's like it's raining and you have to get from here to there. And then everyone's pushing you in the street and it smells like piss. And there's rats everywhere. And you're just like, ugh. I just want a hot dog, but it's $5. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been there where I, where I was sick of the city and I left. Yeah. You know, and then I came back. So it's a balance. It's, it's not for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's not for everybody. It's hard because when you go other places, like I'll go to other cities when I'm like doing shows and I'm like, this place stinks compared to New York. Like I understand how lucky I have it. Yeah. But also it's overwhelming at times too. Where do you like going? Um, I think I just like seeing different places. Like I just like seeing the way other people live. I think it's interesting. Yeah. I'm just like, wow, this is how you guys live. Weird. So when you travel, are you driving or? Um, Usually like I'll place? fly or something. And it is just strange being like people live in these houses. Like this is crazy. I think I would feel that way about my own house too. Like it is weird the way I live as well. I live in a basement. You live at your still. Home. You're you're. So are you from? You're from Queens. I'm from originally. Queens. My mom randomly decided to move to Jersey. She looked at like, she had a, an obsessive desire to move. So she looked at like. 50 houses mm -hmm. and picked one in Jersey, even though she knew no one in the area. But luckily, there was a basement. Mm -hmm. so. so you're there. There For I now. Am. Yeah. Not for long, I not, don't think. Not for I long. I should read your cards and see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Yes. And um, I do want you to read my cards. I'm going to read It's them. funny because on my podcast, I always read whoever, like I always pull a card, but you read cards and I really want you to. Yeah. Well, all, for fun. For but, fun. you yeah. know, I mean, you know, the great psychic I don't need to sound Maria. so negative about New York I feel like lately I've been a little like negative I should be appreciating things more I just sometimes you just get stuck in that like rut maybe You're 28 is it. about appreciating things mm -hmm. gratitude yeah but I think sometimes you gotta like I said you dump it all out and you say what do I want and what I don't want you know just because you were born here doesn't mean you have to stay here and maybe you need to change. I want to be able to be here without feeling consumed by like the negative elements of it. Like there are things that I really love about New York, but sometimes it's hard to be here without feeling all the negativity. Like there are people that I hate here. I don't want to have to think about them while I'm here. Hate, huh? Hate. Hate. Yeah. Yeah. There's like bad memories because life happened here, like all right. of life. So it's like I want to be here and enjoy the good things about New York without feeling like the bad memories of life that also came with it, you know? Yeah, I, I hear you. I don't know. Maybe I mean, you have to. Well, you know, <laughs> you've got to find the right place for yourself and you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what about your – so what's going on with your love life? I mean, um, just Oh, yeah. We have, a what's boyfriend. Happening. we have a boyfriend. <laughs> I have a boyfriend. I'm trying to keep, you know, is he tattooed? You're trying to keep it positive? No, no, I'm not. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, um, I, I've been, we've been through a few of your relationships. We have. Like, I feel honored that I know some of that. You of do. Them. You I even know. met the one. I remember you hated this guy because you saw <laughs> Oh, my God. I get very protective of you, Natalie. Like, that, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The first two, the I would, yeah. We, I was ready oh, yeah, to cut yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the first one that... But that's the fun of it. You have to go through these guys, right? Well, he came to the party at your house, and he and oh, you were yeah, like... Oh, yeah, that one. That was the worst. And I, yeah, I thought he was arrogant. I didn't like him. Did he say he called me a turd to you guys? No, I didn't. He didn't. Not to me. Or to like a Maybe Matt. or something. And Matt, yeah. He said, yeah. oh, yeah, Nat... They're like, oh, we love... And I went to the bathroom. They're like, we love Natalie. And he's like, yeah, she's a turd. <laughs> And then they were like, "Such a psycho!" What? <laughs> I spoke to him for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went to Matt and I said, "Like, I don't like that guy." Yeah. He's not going to stay with Natalie. Like, we're going to do something about that. We're going to have to eliminate him. Yeah. He was a drag. Yeah. Yeah. And you're awesome. It was like, what? But that happens. It does happen. You know. You've I mean, always given me the most solid, solid dating advice of anyone. What about the one in California? Oh my God. That one, I think, I mean, Matt and I were, we were planning something, you know, we were going to, really? yeah, yeah, we were, we were going to go after that guy. Yeah. We had a plan. And that's in town, by the way. I was like, you should come to the podcast and talk to Natalie. You have to see him. Um, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, he, we were angry. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, but no. now you, now he's you're very, he's settled. so sweet. He's like the nicest guy. He's, he's a really good person. This guy. Yeah. Okay. He's a great guy. 
He's got me. Ex- we exercise together. We oh run. God. You run. I. I I've been running with him. It's he wow. runs in the cold though. Like we, I run in the rain, so I. No I wonder have you're to... depressed about New York. You're running in the. Does he make you get up in the morning? He doesn't and run? make me. He's like you don't have to run with me, but I want to impress him, so okay. I like run with him. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. But no, he's great. What shoes do you wear? I wear these shoes. Let me I see. wear. Uh, oh, good so shoes. they're like real. Yeah, Nike. They're, wow. Nice hope like socks. Thank you. Um, wow, I, I wouldn't have pinned you for a runner. I wouldn't have pinned me as someone that moves in any capacity, but and then you got to move. Yeah, yeah. So he's good, and then uh, and he's a comedian. He's a comedian. Mm-hmm. He's nice. He's got this younger than me. He's younger than you. Can you believe this? Just a month, but still, oh, it's psh. shocking. I know it's good. The younger ones are good. It's, it's good, good to go a little younger. I so, think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Excellent. Love life is good. Family is good. And he's going to go on the road with you? Are you going to go on the road? Yeah, we're going to go on the road together. We have like some shows coming up that are planned. I feel like things are good. I just, my, you know, maybe my mental attitude could be adjusted in a more sunny way. Maybe you need to go to Florida. Florida could be. Have you, have you done comedy there? I'm curious about that. Florida's fun. I think Florida's a very fun scene. Anywhere other than New York, really, would be a delight. Austin, Texas. Austin is have you great. been there? I have been to Austin. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious because your family is – so my boyfriend, he has, like, a really awesome family, and they're super kind. Where's and he from? He's from Jersey. Okay. And your family is, like, they're all so creative. Like, Jimmy, Stella Rose, like, they're, like <laughs> – you guys are all working on projects together. Like we did that music video. Oh my God, yes. And data management. <laughs> That's coming out. It's yeah. coming out on um, Dust. It's gun- Gunpowder and Sky. Oh, it's cool. a platform off of Gunpowder and Sky, which is a cool sci-fi platform. I like that Watch name. Watch Dust. Yeah. So That's January. Cool. So And you open up the film. Natalie. I do? Kind of, yeah. Have you seen it? Did I not send it to you? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, you see the the employee who's the lead. Okay. And you say, "Good morning, Mr. Morgan." I do. And you, yeah, it's a close up. Like you, the camera just like lands on your face. So funny because if I'm not wearing eyeliner, I'm like, "Why does my face look like that?" Oh, you look good. But yeah, I mean, you're in character. You're yes. one of the workers. Yeah, that I'm was a fun. It was a very fun. That was fun. It was, that was a fun character. I liked playing. The I miss boss. acting. I think acting would be like very. I've been getting some. I've been getting a lot of voiceover auditions lately. You know, I just did one yesterday for um, a podcast called Hot White Heist. It's oh. hilarious. You should check it out. What is it? It's uh, it's about um, a heist of a sperm bank. It's hilarious. Really? Yeah. Cynthia Nixon's in it, Ian McKellen. Like it's, you know, it's it's a, it's really good. Adam Goldman is the writer. And anyway, I, I did like a computer voice for them, but you should check it That's out. cool. Maybe you can get on that show. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. I'd love, to, I mean, I'm definitely going to put you in one of my films. Yay. Coming forward. I'm going to direct something that's actually has no dialogue in February. I think we're going to film it. Mm-hmm. Super short. Um you know, it's another dark theme. It's about a woman in a clock shop, and she has to face um, a part of herself. But I won't, you know, I won't, I won't say what it's about completely. But, I love that. Um, and uh, there's a child in it too. There's a there's a little girl that comes into the clock shop. I look at Stella Rose's Instagram. You're, I'm like, she is such a badass. I'm like, if I had you as a mom, like, yeah, I would be such a fucking badass. <laughs> You're, you are. I, I you know, but no like, I'm not actually. Like, I'm just like a little weenie. <laughs> like, I see myself as like a little weenie teddy bear inside of a vending machine. I see Stella Rose. I'm like, damn, she is fuck. She is like, she is an artist. Like she, and then the one. Like she's like on stage. She's She's rock and roll. She's singing. I'm like, damn. It was really funny. Um, Of course, she's gonna win any competition. Like, are you out of your mind? Of course, she is. She, yeah, she's amazing. This is really funny. Um, So she won. Well, she just came out with two her second single, which Mm -hmm. is amazing. I mean, she's she's blown up. Yeah, she got that blue check like overnight. I was like, oh, look at that. But. She's really talented, but what's so funny is, um, you know, when you see her performance, it's very badass and like mm-hmm. in your face. And 
um, she's fierce. Yeah. Um, and she has an angelic voice. She really does, but she mm-hmm. can also really grit. Mm-hmm. So the mix is so interesting. And then she comes off stage and she's like, hi, how you doing? You know, people are like, what the fuck just happened here? But um, she did Battle of the Bands at Baby's All Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and they won. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, family members were looking at her, like, you know, Jimmy and Alexander were watching her and they were like nodding their heads. And I went out and I was like, what's up? And they were like, "Mm -hmm. we see what she's doing. Like that little kick-ass girl that, you know, drove them crazy. She's like filtering it up there because when you meet her, she's, she's just super cool and laid back. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not what she shows. So she's filtering it. Thank God. Because if you don't, it's like, what are you going to do with that energy? Right. Right. Um, but so she won and the the trophy was like, I mean, it's really big. It's plastic and like shiny and sparkly, super tacky mm-hmm. and awesome. And it's like this big. So I put it on my piano uh-huh. next to my husband's award for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I should show you a picture. It's like Stella Rose's trophy and then like. David's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's, That's so funny. I love it. Yeah. But she's great, you know, and she's um family of superstars. Mm-hmm. She's going to do well. That's, That's amazing. Sure. Yeah. I but love that. you're a badass. You are. Thank you. Yeah. We don't, I mean, Stella Rose feels like a teddy bear inside, I'm sure. I guess we all do. Yeah. You got well, it. will you read my cards? Yeah. I'm going to read. Okay. Also, so, I always ask what the best advice read. you ever received was. The best advice. Um, well, that's a good question, and I guess it's a toss-up. I mean, you are a comedian, so maybe I should. It could be bad. You know, anything. there's there's the advice I got from my very dear friend after my first husband died, very young, and then there's then there's I think probably the one I'll share with you is the advice my first gynecologist gave me i mean you guys talk about vaginas on this show a lot okay, like i feel like sure. you always talk about vaginas me I mean, <laughs> I mean when i see the your clips it's like this woman that um was doing the exercise the kegel exercises and oh, she was the giving vaginas. herself an, yeah yeah orgasm i mean mm-hmm. i feel like you know this, yeah i mean we're women like, yeah we you, can talk you, you yeah, have yeah. men on this show but it's give like give me both i want both well, okay. I can't believe you just have two nuggets and I wouldn't get one of them. That would be crazy. I would just be walking around without a nugget of advice. I, I, I have a lot. I could be living I have better. a lot. Um, oh, my God. I want all of it. I mean, a lot of advice I didn't take. That was probably good. But, um, no, my, I mean, I went to my first gynecologist and, and she said to me, um, you know, the most important thing about being a woman and a good woman is uh, wiping down. And I was like, what? And when you pee, you got to wipe down. <laughs> and no, I mean, but I'm telling you, like this, that one piece of advice, it goes deep. It actually covers everything that we talked about. Wipe down. Do you you wipe down? I do wipe down. Jesus. Okay. okay. So like wipe down. So yeah, don't bring I mean, all the you, bad stuff up. Yeah. Okay. You gotta, you gotta keep that shit down. You gotta wipe away the shit. I guess it's sometimes emotionally I wipe up. No. Never. You got to wipe down when you pee. Always. I'm, oh, are and, you just and talking about And she also pee? said, keep, treat your vagina like you treat your face. That's the truth. That's a good I one. I don't wash my face. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't treat your vagina like you treat your face. Listen, we're women. This is important. I mean... So wait, how are you supposed That's to- the center of everything. No, I agree. Like everything. So wipe down. Okay, is so this wipe just down. about literally? No, I mean, okay, yeah, wipe yes, down. literally wipe down, but look at like what it avoids if you wipe down. Okay. Metaphorically, it wipe down. Wipe down. It's like wiping, a, you, yes, you know, I agree. it's like this is my space. Yeah. Um, and okay, so I think the very best advice I ever got because I obviously, after my first husband passed, it was I was young. I was twenty seven um, and devastated. Um, and some months had gone by, and I kind of wasn't doing well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
like, you know, I couldn't shake. I mean, it's not like you have to shake it, but I, I really was just like, I lost so much weight. I wasn't able to concentrate. I just couldn't move forward. Yeah. And so a good friend of mine, he like pulled me aside and he said, listen, you know, grief is a real thing. Um, but at one point, and he said, and I've been through it in my life at one point in life, you've got to wake up in the morning and I do this, um, and make a choice to be happy. That's good advice. That's it. And it changes everything. It's a choice. It's, it's, it goes back to the book. I mean, I hate to be a broken record, but it's like life's kind of simple. And it's not always easy to do that, but it's necessary. Yeah. And everything changes. If you make that choice, then you walk into your day different. You know? I love you, Jen. Yeah. It's, yeah. So you, that's Aww. that's the thing, you know. And, you know, there's uh, – I'm going to read your cards. So here, you have okay. to shuffle. Okay. We've got nine minutes. That's enough time. Okay. Um, you think about what you want to think about. It could be general, but if you have a specific question, do not tell me. I don't want to know. Okay. I just I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. Okay. And this is really you speaking to you, not me speaking to you. They're your cards. I'm just going to interpret them. Okay, now I want you to divide them into three with one hand. I love this tattoo. I like that you bring them together. I like that you have all um, black ink. You don't have any color, right? I have one color. I like the black. I think it's cool. Um, I'm going to write a part for you for sure. Yay. It's going to be great. So I'm going to do three passes. And remember... Um, as Maria Papa Petros taught me, like this is a party trick. If you want a real reading, you go to her. Okay. She's very expensive, but worth it. Um, she said, even if you, if I know the meaning of the card, I'm just going to go with like what comes to me and we're going to assume it. Wow. Okay. Interesting. You are protected right now. Your birthday's coming. Okay. Um, you are going in oh so so there's a there's a man in your life who right here right now who's kind of stern um the way you handle him is by really celebrating uh yourself it's important to celebrate yourself um it's interesting because it's almost like you celebrating yourself it strengthens the relationship, whatever that relationship is. Um, you're leaving a period where you feel like you were getting a lot of criticism or like straight, straight questions getting pushed a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, and that's you've handled that really well. And you're going into a period of. Um, there's some. There's an older man with money that's interest. That's going to help you. Help you make things happen. Um, interestingly, one of the gifts that you have to kind of support yourself right now, and you are protective. You you had this is a this is a card of protection. You have protection around you, which is amazing. Um, I think that's kind of why you feel like the city closing in on you. Like you need to feel protected. You should think about that. How you how how you can make yourself protected and feel protected. But you, there, it is available to you. Um, sort of like, I know some of your comedy is self-degradating at times. Like there's something about, there's a, there's a real charm in the way that you um, are transparent about feeling worn out hmm. or carrying others. Hmm. Um Let's so whatever I say, you think about it. Um, it might make sense later. You're you're changing. You know what? You it, this man is going to show up. This older man who's going to help you make things happen, and it is actually going to change your home life. 
So, and there's also a young man that's there that's going to help you too. You are, um, you should get some acupuncture. Do you do acupuncture ever? I have. You got to get your blood moving. The running is probably really good. Um, and be, to get yourself ready for crossing over, this is a this is bridge to new things. You need to get yourself ready physically for crossing over to a new place in your life. And when you get there, you are going to create things. You know, there's going to be something new, a new project, or um, you know, you're going to manifest new things that you want. You do not need to hold on tight. You see this guy? He's like standing on his pentacles, which is what he owns, and holding them and showing them. Not necessary. You don't need to show it so much. You have it. Hmm. Oh, wow. So, yeah, there's something that you are going to win. You know, there's there's something that you're going to accomplish and conquer right now. And it it is creative and emotional. Hmm. So... Yeah, just remember you're protected and stepping back for a little bit to see what you need is important. There's a, there's a guy who um, is going to be very helpful to you. Wow. Okay. So, you know, you're headed for a lot of strength and new beginnings. Um, and you're really afraid to let some, you're, you're really afraid to let things go, things that no longer serve you, but it's fine because you'll get there. You have the, the help that you need. All right. So your body needs a little attention and doing some kind of, and when I say spiritual practice. I don't mean something really heavy duty. I just mean like it could be getting up in the morning and like writing a little or lighting a candle or throwing out an intention. There's something it's important for you to do a little something in the morning and a little something before you go to bed, just a little hmm. to get yourself sorted. And you are going to try. Wow. Okay. This is your last card in the center. This is you now. That's my That's birthday you. card. That's the star. That's that's a new bright beginning and you have a lot of energy going forward. You just have to it's it's so interesting to see these cards. You're you're in a time of making things happen. Like you've done a lot, you're taking a look at all the work that you've done, but there's something that you know that you want to do that you haven't done yet. It's like you're saving it. Um you know, don't do too many drugs. And there's some romance in your life. Very nice. You have to make a decision. There's a decision that you don't want to make that you have to, but you'll have the strength to make it. And um, I think you're going to travel. And I mean, you have the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Swords. Those are really powerful cards going forward and and claiming what's yours the one thing in here um that i would so there's a there's also a woman that um that can really help you go forward but um it, you don't trust her but she actually could really help you so we have to think about that we'll have to talk about that later like, who is this woman? There's a woman that in your mind you don't completely trust. I think going back to, like, your spiritual ritual and taking care of your body, as long as you make yourself feel safe, um, like, doors open. So, so really finding an atmosphere twice a day just for a little bit that makes you feel totally relaxed and safe, like even 10 minutes, five minutes, it'll give you the energy that you need. You need some energy to move forward and you have a lot of help. Hmm. Don't be, look at that. 
don't be afraid of letting what needs to be gone, gone, because look what you get, the magician. The magician can do anything and has access, has all the tools. It's a genius card. So it's like you're afraid of your own genius. Hmm. You're a genius. You're a badass. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's your card. All right. Happy birthday. Thanks, Jen. You're amazing, Natalie. Oh, what a good reading. You are. Do you have a question? I don't know. I can ask a simple question. You have 24 seconds. How many cards was that? I did three passes. That's the way Maria teaches it. Wow. But we can, if you have like a specific question, I'll pull like eight cards. No, I don't know what to say. Think about it. I think you got enough information. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. Thank it, you. It is private having a reading. Hold on a second. I'm going to do one thing for you. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'll tell you what I asked. It's about you. So, I mean, that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Are you going to tell me what you asked? Yeah. So I said, what does Natalie need to know? So you really need to believe in yourself. And, like, that's you on the horse. It's someone who's, like, so full of abundance. And this is a new beginning. Like, the star and the sun are new beginnings that are super positive. I mean, it's more than just, like, a one-time, like, new beginning. It's, like, that's what you're made of. So whenever you want to let that out, it's available to you. So it's like, what does Natalie need to know? Nat that's what you need to know. Oh, thanks, Jen. Yeah, it's good. And, you know, like, let destiny take away what needs to be taken away. And protect yourself. You have to protect yourself. You know, that I think that's why you don't, I think that's why the city moves in on you. Like, I think you're sensitive and you feel stuff. And um, you're picking up on stuff that's not yours. So you have to protect yourself. And it's easy to do that. If you have the right people around you, they can be helpful. But, like, own your little space. I mean, <laughs> no, that's why I'm telling you that now. Um, like, guys girls, whatever, you know, people that are interested, people we work with, whatever. It's like you got to you gotta have a few core people that really understand who you are. If you can be lucky, it's just a few. And, and like, Matt's someone like that. Like, you don't see him a lot, but, like, you could call him and he would be that person. Like, I, I could say that because I know Matt well enough mm -hmm. and I trust him. Not everybody's trustworthy. Yeah. Um, but you need to feel like safe inside and make sure that you like hold your space. Even when you're around someone like your boyfriend who you really like and it's like, it's, you have to like expand your space a little bit. And if you even imagine in the morning, like, um, like a bubble going, like opening from your heart around you, like this card, and you have all that sunshine in there, that, and then just say like shield up or whatever. Pick a word that you like, and just think of like little sparkly around you, and then go on, and then forget about it. And then at night, do it again. That's it. I bet you're gonna feel that because energy is real, you know. And um, and when you know how to use it, like I know this stuff, and I know, and I've used it, and there are times when I can't access it. And it's usually because I'm, I haven't like kind of held my space. If I hold my space, I'm cool. Yeah. And, and even when bad things happen, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's like you. I mean, you go on stage. How do you do that? Right. I mean, I'm asking. You have to you hold your that? space. But I mean, specifically, how, what gets you to be able to do that? Like you've been doing it a while. 
And I know that your presence has shifted, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know how to get up there. You've done it a lot of times, right? Right. So what happens before you get up? Um... I don't know. I just like talk to myself a certain way, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's the same right. thing. Right, and so I mean, it's your secret, but um, you must do something, mm -hmm. right? But you also want to make sure because there are people looking at you, even like Instagram or social media or Twitter, or whatever it is that you're on. Um, there are people that are like, and I, like this is real. Even like David, like he he has to get up on stage or Stella Rose, like you know. We talk about it. When you have that kind of attention coming at you, you have to know how to have a barrier of protection. Mm -hmm. Even if it's positive attention towards you, it's like it's like heartbeats. You know what I mean? It's like it, it's just the way that the world works. You got to um, have a barrier. Yeah. You know? Um, otherwise, you get really tired. Yeah. Like even if it's good. Yeah. It's just fuck Right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So figure out how to restore yourself. And I think it's just a little bit every day. Thanks, and then it Jen. works. Yeah. You're the best. You're the best. <laughs>